Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we'll be starting a mini-series where we'll be creating an inventory system. I did do this about a year ago and I made about four or five videos on it, but even though it worked, it wasn't great and there's like so much I've learned since then to do this better and I think that it's time to make a new version of the series. So um, I'm going to show you what we're going to aim to make, which is what I made in my own like RPG that I've been making in my own time. Obviously we can tweak it to fit what you guys want to see, add features if you want to see certain things like a shop or whatever, but the current plan or the current example I can show you is that you can move around like so. Well obviously this is not going to be part of the inventory thing and the moving around, but we're going to have some kind of item container and when you interact with it you get a list of everything inside of it. So you can see we've got 5 health potions, 20 arrows, 3 speed potions. The actual number text isn't great on here but it doesn't matter we can change that on ours and you click on the item to get it or you can press loot all to just get all the rest and if you press the button for your inventory um, you can see all your items it tells you on them for example max deck free I did a video about a week ago maybe I can't remember actually when it was if it might have been a month ago it might have been when I before I did my exams but uh, we made this UI the same system I've got here. So what I'll be doing in the next video, because this first video is focused on the underlying system, next video will be implementing UI so we can see everything in the game. But I'm going to be bringing across and probably deleting my tooltip UI uh, from GitHub and actually just merging it with the one for this video so that we end up having a just an item system GitHub repo where you can have the UI and the actual code all together. So you have health potions, max stack free, that's why there's a free here and a two there. I can drag items around, I can swap them around, it all works just fine. Close inventory, open it, obviously it works just fine like that. If I um, put an item on my hotbar, it actually tells you the max um, count you have of that item in your inventory. Because obviously I have five health potions, so when I'm using it on my hotbar I want to know I have five left. And then if I used it, which I can't use because obviously I haven't, oh no I haven't made that system, okay cool. So now it goes down to three, and then it's actually uh, delayed because I added a drinking time for the potion and for some reason the potion costs mana I don't know why I made that but it hey it works anyway so it goes down in the inventory if you drag an item out of the inventory and let go it says are you wish you want are you sure you want to destroy it if you press yes and it goes away and updates on both of them so that's what we're going for um, it works pretty well so I hope you guys stick around and feel free to ask any questions or suggest any features you want me to implement but for this video we'll just be creating the inventory, being able to add items, remove items, and maybe even swap items around. So yeah, we'll get to the code just in a minute. But before we get to the code, I'd like to thank my patrons, with special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else would like to help support the channel and community, the link is in the description below. But now we can get into the coding. Okay, so to, before we start coding, it's always a good idea in these kind of things to write out a class diagram, or to draw out a class diagram. So. Obviously, you can change these things over time to suit your needs, but because I've already started making this, this is the way I did it. So I would have made the base class be called item, but it would get a bit confusing because a spell isn't really an item. So what I did was I made the base class called hotbar item because everything can go on the hotbar. Anything you can have in your inventory can go on the hotbar. Spells can go on the hotbar. If you add like an ability system or some other things that you've got, you have stuff to go in your hotbar, that can inherit as well. But hotbar item is like the basic stuff. It just has a name and an icon basically. Because spells don't have quantities, they don't have stacks, whereas inventory items do. So that's one property of an inventory item is that it has a quantity and stuff. So that when we make slots in the um, inventory, we don't have a list of hotbar items with a list of inventory items and then so on from there. And then consumable store logic for what happens when you use them, weapons, ammo, so on. So this is what we're going to go for. Now in this video we only really need to go as far as inventory item um, and then we can make those you know later or we could you could make them yourself I don't really need to do that I might make one for an example but at least for this video because we're not actually making a, a hotbar system yet we're just making the inventory system we're gonna create the base class inherit give the inventory item its properties and we're just going to use these two classes pretty much for this video Okay, so now we're in Unity. I've just got a blank project. I've done the usual, just renamed the camera, renamed the folders, created some folders. That's all we need for now. And I've just created all these scripts are empty at the moment. Uh, they're just, you know, empty classes, empty interface. I'm going to get into that. Just make sure you've got all these classes. You don't have to make them all instantly. I just made them already, so I'd remember. 
I've got them all open here. So let's start off at hotbar item because that's the base class. To be honest, that's the um, most low down class we're going to have for items in general. Anything that's going to go in the hotbar or the inventory. So for a hotbar item, we're going to make it abstract because nothing is actually going to be of type hotbar item. Uh, I've mentioned abstraction in the past. I've got a separate video on it, so I'm going to skip over the explanation this time. So it's the scriptable object because we're going to have uh, instance of instances of them saved in our project rather than creating them in an external JSON file. We can just use scriptable objects. That's what they're meant for. Uh, I'm going to put a header, which is just a built-in tag for the UI to make it look nicer, for, like basic info. And then I'm going to make a uh, new string name. The reason I'm using the keyword new is because otherwise it'll tell me there's a naming conflict because in Unity objects have a name value anyway so we're kind of overwriting that and I'm going to call it like new um, hotbar item name. But to be honest because you technically won't create... Oh, no, actually that's right, that's right. It's fine. Uh, and then we want a sprite maybe so serialize field private sprite and then you probably want to just call this like the icon. It's the icon of the item. So icon equals null. Well, I'm just initializing it to null anyway. I just have a habit of doing that. Uh, public string. So now we're going to write some getters. So public string name. You do equals greater than for that syntax. And then little name. So this means that any external class that is trying to get the name of this item can't change it. If you mouse over here, it says name get so they can reference it and use it to display in the UI for example but they can't change it because we don't want them to we want a public get it for um, colored name which I'm gonna make abstract and I'll explain that well if you've watched my tooltip UI tutorial which I've got a github repo for and I mentioned earlier in this video um, in that video I used colored names so for example items colored name would be based on their rarity and um, spells would be based on their element. So the, because the different items set their colors differently due to rarity or element, I just make this abstract saying it's not my problem. The base classes need to sort it out, essentially is what abstract means. So we're going to make that a string, colored name, spelled the English way. And that's just going to, um, that's going to be a getter. Now I'm actually just going to test something. If you want to do a getter, but not like, can you use that syntax even if, uh, Nope, that, that's how you do it. Yeah, there's no other way. And then below that, we want a public sprite icon capitalized, which returns the icon. We don't, as I said earlier with the name, we don't want to accidentally set the icon externally. We don't want to like clear it or anything. We want to just leave it how it is. And we want one function, public abstract string get info display text that's what i call it anyway so when we're displaying it on the ui later the different classes are going to display different information so for example the ammunition would display maybe what type of weapon it's for the spells will display what tree they're from or a description of what the spell does when you use it um weapons might have like damage and attack speed on so all these different items are going to have different ways of displaying that so we just want our base classes to have a way of um getting a string from them essentially Okay, now we're into the item slot class. Oh, I, sh I should say a uh, struct. So, again, in the past I've mentioned the difference between classes and structs. I don't need to explain it again fully, but briefly, a struct uh, uses values, whereas a class uses references. Now, that's not like the full description. That's a very brief description. But the point is, we can very easily just pass some data around in a struct rather than a class, which is more efficient because classes have extra data that we don't need. And that's, I guess, the dumb, most dumbed down way to explain it. Don't use classes if you don't need to. All we're going to pass around in here is we're going to have a um, public inventory item, item, and then a quantity. And I'm going to put the tag like... Um, min and the min is going to be zero no sorry one for the quantity public int quantity but that's not actually going to stop the value going below it that's just going to make the um what i set it to be basically i could just leave this as you know public int quantity that makes more sense probably it's up to you it just stops you when you're accidentally like, for example, if you're setting up a chest to have a certain amount of items and you can't accidentally set an item to have zero, but 
because there's no time when you'd want to do that. I don't know, I'll leave it as this to keep it simple. And we can just remove these unnecessary usings. So we've just got a struct that stores two things about uh, an item. And we could create a constructor for this, but I think it's fine how it is. Unless you really want to, we could tie uh, public item slot. It takes in an inventory item called item and an integer called quantity. And it just says this dot item is the item we're being passed in. And this dot quantity is equal to the quantity being passed in. It's not necessary, but some people like it, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's the hot item slot done and the hotbar item done. So when I was writing this earlier, I put it inherited from scriptable object, but actually we're going to inherit from our own class, the hotbar item. So we now have the hotbar item things, but we don't actually want this class to be a normal class. We also want this to be an abstract class so that we won't get these red underlines. It says, all right, we're passing down again the job of... Um, filling in those classes we, well not classes, sorry, those functions that we made abstract. So if I go back to inventory, hotbar item, sorry, these things were made abstract. We're gonna be the job of the inventory item to do or sort out, but we've made it abstract again. So it's whoever inherits from this, it's now their job. And the next one down might be consumable, which won't be abstract and that will have to handle its own data. So I'm gonna put a header for this called like item data. We're going to have a rarity, but then again, I haven't actually made rarity yet. I've got that in my other uh, video, so I'll add that in the next video. I'm not going to do that right now. We don't need to worry about that. We can just have a private int uh, sell price, which is equal to one, and a private int max stack, which is equal to one. By, by default, you can obviously change those. And I'm actually going to put on here the min. But I'm gonna, this makes more sense. I'll put zero, right? So if I do uh, min zero. Because if the max stack of an item is less than one, then we've clearly done something wrong there. And if the sell price is less than zero, um, we've clearly done something wrong there. So I guess this min should be one for the max stack. And then what we can do now, let me just make sure that is, yeah, okay. We want to choose now how to do the colored name but as I said we're probably gonna do that in the next video I'm gonna write it now so public override string colored name for the colored name we're just gonna have to convert the rarity color but we haven't actually made the rarity as I said we're gonna do that in the next video so for now I'm just gonna say return the name of the item so this isn't actually done yet this is a to do but I'll do it in the next video then down here, I'm just going to keep all these getters on the same. I'm going to not bother doing any spaces between all the getters. So we're going to do the sell price now. So public int sell price. Oops. Get return sell price. And then we want to basically do that again two more times, but for different, different uh, bits of data. So we want to say max stack return max stack. We don't have the rarity, so I'm going to leave that blank, actually. And just to be consistent, we should use the um, expression body, this uh, format for it, because that's what it likes us to do. It doesn't matter which way you want to do it, but this is you know less stuff to write, and it just says sell price gets you the sell price variable, which is private, but it can return it anyway. And finally, we're done with that. So now we can make a consumable, for example, just as a test item after I just remove those usings. So let's go make a new class. Okay, so I created the consumable item class and then I made so that uh, I inherited from inventory item. So now obviously it's telling me you need to do some stuff. You need to implement the function get info display text. So if I just click, okay, yeah, whatever, then this is where I have to actually do it. And I'm not gonna do this completely in this video because as I said, this is more to do with the UI, but you can just uh, do, for example, um, we're gonna use string builder for adding this all together. But for that, we need to import it. And for now, we can just say, um, we want to do builder.append, just the name for now, because we haven't got the rarity sorted out, dot append line. 
And then maybe for consumable, we should just give it some data at the top actually. So we're gonna say header consumable data, consumables um, have a string for now at least, just the use text first. Uh, just whatever you want it to say. I mean, eventually, if you actually added a system for doing effects when you use the consumable, you probably want it to grab the text from those effects. Um, now, we don't actually have any logic for using the consumable, so we'd have to worry about that. So all we need to do really now is we can say like, I don't know, build a dot append, and I'm gonna say color equals green, because that's what RPGs usually do. I think it looks pretty good. Then we append the use text. Then we append the closing uh, tag dot append line. And I think that is it. You can also, for example, put on builder dot append max stack dot append and then the actual value, so max stack dot append line. The reason I'm not just adding strings together like you would normally do is because every time you add a string together in C Sharp, it creates a new string, which ends up having loads of garbage at the end, which is the technical term. And so, so using String Builder actually does it without creating a, um, it, I think it creates one new string for the entire thing. It doesn't just create one for every time you add a new thing together. So if you keep using like append, and then append line is just doing append and then the slash n. So, uh, Maybe your price is in gold, so you want it to say gold. And then maybe that's done. So all you want to do is you want to return builder dot two string. So that's all. I mean, I'll change that to be rarity when uh, I get the rarity sorted out. For now, this works. So this is our consumable item with its data and displaying it on the UI, which we're going to do in the next video, um, or maybe even the third video, because I'd like to keep these videos short and do quite a few of them because it makes it easier to follow rather than having really long videos. So I think all I'm going to do now is I'm going to write out the functions we want in our item container and then in the next video we'll actually write the logic for the item container. I think that makes more sense than just shoving everything into one video. So the item container is just going to store all the functions that anything that contains items needs to have. And in our inventory, we'll actually have all the logic for that. And the good thing about this is if your game, if you want this item system, but for example, your inventory works differently, you can just um, make your inventory have the same function names, even if the logic's different, and make sure it just inherits from I item container. And then, because I item container is just going to say what an item container needs to have, it's not going to say how it needs to do it. So, what does an item container need? Well, you need to really be able to get a list of item slots. So public, uh, I mean, in reality, you shouldn't have to interact even with the item slots. So let's just say we want a public function for adding an item. But because we're using this item slot, what we can do is we can actually get that back to find out, for example, if we add an item, but there's not enough room, we can find out let's say out of a stack of five that we tried to add only, there was only room for three. So we can get back two saying there's two spaces left. So it's very useful to say we want a public item slot returning function called add item, which takes in an item slot as well. Or you could use the out feature where like, um, yeah, we might actually change that. But because this is in a an interface, you actually want to put that on the end and you don't actually, if you look here, it says modifier public's not right. In interfaces, you don't put public. It just assumes that anyway. So you um, you just leave it like this. You just put the return type, the function name, and what it takes in. So we've got add item. Now, obviously, you want to be able to remove an item. So this would be a void, because when you remove an item, you don't get anything back. It's just going to remove it. So remove item. And then you want to take in the item to remove and how many to remove. So you can actually do that with an item slot because that's going to have an item and a quantity. So that's quite nice. So um, just pass in an item slot. We might change the names of, the, of those variables, but it doesn't really matter. It works fine. So we've got add item, remove item. What else might you want? You might want um, 
to remove an item like at an index in the list. So you might want void remove at int slot index. Then you might also want to swap two slots. So you would say void swap int index one int index two. You might want to check whether you have a certain item in the inventory. So we can have a boolean for has item. And it takes in an inventory item. Item. We might want to get the total quantity of an item. Let's take out of that public. Let's line that up. All right, yeah. So you might want to check how many of a certain item you have. So uh, get total quantity, which it returns an integer. I need to stop writing public for these. So to get the total quantity, you just pass in an item. And it's going to check how many of them you have. And I think that's it now. So that's what a, an item container is. Anything that contains items will have all of these functions in. So you, in your own game, can write the logic for this. And whenever I actually need to use an item container in my game, I'll just refer to the interface, call these functions. The actual logic is abstracted away. And it's good design to do that. And it makes sense. It's easier to work with. So to be honest, I'm just going to leave that like that. We've made the item container. The inventory, uh, we might as well just write is of type i item container. And if you watch this now, we're going to press implement and boom, we've got all of these now here, but we haven't actually coded them yet. So that's what we're going to do next video. Uh, keep this video short. I'll do another one tomorrow or the day after. Um, check out this project on GitHub. The link will be in the description below, or you can go search me Dapper Dino on GitHub. We're going to keep adding to this. Feel free to just leave below ideas of what you want me to cover in this. So you might say, oh, I want to know how to do a shop system where we can interact with a vendor and they have their own inventory and we can buy and sell items, for example, if the player has their own currency, like uh, their own money system. We can build on this system and keep it going. Feel free to make modifications on the GitHub and you know, just give me ideas of what to add and stuff. But apart from that, uh, I think that's it for this video. So I'll see you in part two. Thanks for watching. And goodbye.